What does it mean to be dominant? I've played at the highest level. I've received the highest award. Thank you. But those things did not make me dominant. On this show, I want to interview people from various backgrounds and careers to see what made them dominant. That's why I decided to partner up with Mission Bueno. Together, we want to promote progress and achievement while sharing real stories of struggle and success. We want to acknowledge the challenges in front of us, but we also want to pivot towards improvement and positivity. Everything is going to work out. We are the dominant ones. We dunk on the world. We don't let the world dunk on us. Yeah, she do be laced no. when I when she, uh, You are laced. That's why I'm glad I'm dressed. I'm down dressed. I've never seen you in a t-shirt and sweats. I, I have never. I have only seen only you in the summer. Only in the summer. Only in the summer. Only in the summer. Hat on top, cause we think excellent. Frames on straight, cause I see excellent. Dress for success, cause I be excellent. Hey, we do. Hey, Hey, Roz. Hey, Nick. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for coming, honey. So, Roz, thank you for being here. I really appreciate you coming home. And we like to have a nice, relaxed atmosphere and talk about people's career and what really motivated them to do what they do. So, mm -hmm. it's always fun for me to ask people uh, what really made you want to get into broadcasting? Where did it first start? Well, I think it was just my way of staying close to the game. Um, I'd always been, I've always thought about life after basketball. It's mm -hmm. the way I was raised with my mom and dad. I also think as a female athlete, you know, you start thinking about how far can I use basketball as a vehicle in mm -hmm. my life. I've been playing since I was the age of four. Mm -hmm. It's my joy. It's my passion. It's given me the chance to go to college for free, a chance to travel the world. It's, it continues to give to me now with a job. Most of my best friends and close people in my life I've met somehow through the basketball world. So it's the game that just keeps giving to mm -hmm. me. And, um, you know, I just started to pursue it because I was like, this is my way of staying close once I stop playing on the court. What well, is kind of a launching pad, you know, for you know, us who played sports for mm -hmm. so long in our lives. And, you know, because this is a very short career. Mm -hmm. Basketball, football, whatever the sport may be, is a very short career, and you got to find some. I'm still something. at LA Fitness. Yeah, well. I'm still at the rec center. Well, you know, you, you're working Watch out more though. than me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't play at all. Nothing. Well, I get out and shoot with my son. You okay. know, but other than that, no. I, I, you know what? I work out to stay in, stay in shape. Okay. You know, because, you, you, know, you know, when you get older, you got to mm -hmm. find ways to get yourself physically moving. So, yeah, that's one of the things I enjoy to do, get out in, in the heat and get out there and shoot, get a good sweat. So it's, it's good stuff. So. One, last, one last question and you get back to me because I don't want to. Uh, uh, absolutely. Don't do go I right ahead. Do. Go I right usually ahead. interview him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so go right not, ahead. This ain't even natural for me, mm -hmm. but can you still in your body? Can you still feel what it feels like to fly and dunk? Um, yes and no. Yes, because I can still, on certain occasions, I still get up and dunk if I want to. Okay. You know. Like what at, kind of dunks are we talking about? Uh, fingertip. <laughs> 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 Not the throwdowns, but you know what? When you keep yourself in shape and you keep yourself physically moving, there's still certain things you can still do. Okay. You may can't do it on the level you once did it, mm -hmm. but you can be very effective and. The other side of that is no, because the passion and drive that I had as a basketball player, I still had that. Mm -hmm. Just physically, the body won't let you do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's a lot of things that I can do. It's a lot of things I can't do anymore. But I still have the love. Mm -hmm. And when I can get out there and shoot and, and hang out with my son and do stuff like that, mm -hmm. that's enough for me. So for me, I actually totally relate with that because when you talk about feeling a joy maybe it it manifests itself in different ways and for me with my career like mm -hmm. being in broadcasting no I'm not on the court playing but I still can feel 
what that joy feels like even in the broadcasting. Like, it's tough because I don't ever get to run into my teammates' mm -hmm. arms anymore screaming. As an adult in the real world, we don't get to be like, ah, yeah. <laughs> you know? So right. um, where I find myself still channeling my inner athlete is in my preparation. Mm -hmm. So like often on game day, even, even as a broadcaster, mm -hmm. um, I do everything the same way. I have my routine. Right. When did you first found, find out that you was really, really good at it? And that could have been, and it could be a career after after basketball. When was the first time you in broadcast you said, you know what, I, I'm really good at this, and this is something I want to make a career out of. I'm not sure if it was clear right away that I was good at it, but it was more just that I knew I wanted to to do it. And so like my steps didn't start mm -hmm. after I graduated from college or finished playing a little mm -hmm. bit overseas and stuff like that. I actually, when I was in college, I, I went to Stanford. Um, I did my undergrad there, I did my master's there. And even while I was work doing, you know, getting my degrees, I taught a public speaking course mm -hmm. um, through the engineering department, um, often working with like engineers who were brilliant, but how to communicate mm -hmm. their ideas to normal people. Mm -hmm. um, I worked at the school radio station as a pr production assistant. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote for a number of digital, um, digital platforms and things like that. And even when I, and at first getting into this industry, almost nothing started on, for me on TV. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have any opportunities on TV. Everything started digital, everything was a hustle. I mean, I really was preparing and trying to just get as much as I could. And as I got more reps, I started to improve. And then I also met with the work, mm -hmm. the timing, and a couple of things opened up for me at the right time. And the preparation made me able to succeed in that moment and opportunity when the door opens. And that's a really tough thing too, when you're trying to break into this field, mm -hmm. especially for women, more so to women than men, mm -hmm. is that the preparation, the educating yourself and just being patient, that's the hardest thing, you know, when you think you're ready, you still kind of get locked out mm -hmm. until you find that one moment where you can break down those doors and you can get in, but that's when you really have to show what you can do, because I went through the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, awesome. as an analyst, because you know, I started out in the studio. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, studio was, was a lot easier because you know you don't have to know what wins and whys. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're when you're broadcasting, and so it, it was easy. But again, I had to learn how to interact with people, mm -hmm. being able to keep that energy level up because it's all about having the energy. You mm -hmm. know, you don't want to be that monotone analyst that you know after a while you you get a little boring and people don't you know mm -hmm. your ratings start to drop. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so you also I, don't want to become a caricature of yourself. Yeah, exactly. Be careful. You know, the thing you want to do is be, you be yourself, you know, you know, keep the energy level up and know what you're talking about and keep it real short. I mean, you don't want to, you got to keep, yes, that. yes. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I know as a woman breaking into this field, I mean, it, it is a lot of uh, tough moments that they have to go through before they break through. So, and I've seen it many, many times because it even happened mm -hmm. with guys like myself, even though you have the name and the reputation, mm -hmm. You got to have more than that. You got to be able to handle yourself in front of the camera. Absolutely, um, and you know we're we're in different positions. You know, mm -hmm. you are you. <laughs> you're a Hall of Famer. Yeah, yeah. At the minimum, you just being there, you're gonna have some credibility with that, just because you're a Hall of Famer. You know, you're a legend. Mm -hmm. um, on top of that, then you put the the work into the craft to be actually good mm -hmm. and entertaining and likable, and people keep bringing you back on and can't keep their eyes mm -hmm. off you. For me, as a female, and also especially when I moved into the men's side, um, I think the biggest thing that gives me confidence when I'm standing as maybe one of the lone women on the men's side, especially if you're in that analyst seat, um, because I actually started as a color commentator and analyst on men's and women's college basketball. Before I got the Warriors sideline reporter job, I was their color commentator and analyst for their D-League team, now G-League. Santa Cruz mm -hmm. Warriors a couple years. Mm -hmm. um, I've done men's A-10. I mean, I've done a lot of analyst work, but obviously when, the higher you go in men, sometimes you get put into sideline role and things like that. And actually right now, I'm working uh, on adding to my portfolio by adding host skills. Um, and actually at the moment, mm -hmm. you know, the biggest thing I've done, I'm currently fill-in hosting um, for First Take, one of the biggest platforms on ESPN. So. I think the first thing that helps me to step into big, bigger stages and ones where perhaps you don't see a lot of me. Not only am I a woman, you know, I'm relatively young, I'm black, I'm, I'm very much myself, um, mm -hmm. which is something that I 
I've stuck to, especially now that I've also like grown as a woman and I have confidence, I know what I'm about, I know what I'm representing, you know? So mm. the biggest thing that gives me confidence is preparation. Mm -hmm. And I think real recognizes real. I'm consistent, mm. I'm on time, I'm prepared. Um, and I hope that that can help me earn Well, I gotta respect. tell you, long as I've known you, from the first day I done, I've done mm -hmm. an interview with you to now, you've always been the same person. You know, that's a, a lovely spirit. Mm -hmm person that always treated everybody great Thank you. and you gave a unbelievable interview so everybody look forward to doing interviews with you you know, you know when we go to go to say you know guys I want to interview with Ross you know so <laughs> but I thought you were great the first time I interviewed with you mm -hmm. you know so I still have that picture it's on yeah. my gram somewhere oh yeah, yeah. And it's been, what, five, six years now? Or has it been it a little might, long? It might have been five. The five years? Because I was still with the Warriors, mm -hmm. and it was early. It was the first time I met you, and mm -hmm. I was and I, either, well, I can't remember if we were home or away. And I was like, I don't even think I asked for an interview. Actually, I just asked for a picture. Actually, you guys was home when we first met. We were met. home, yeah. and I asked mm -hmm. for a picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I should have like, like, I've like, been there um, before. I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> i got to find that picture and <laughs> yeah. send it to you. Um, but... Yeah, and so like I'm, I'm also very fortunate. Like we talked about timing, catching mm -hmm. the Warriors on their way to exploding, and also I caught a good group of men. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody there gave me a chance to shine and treated me with respect. Mm -hmm. And I think I absolutely feel valued my thought process as a former mm -hmm. hooper. Like literally, I think one of the things that have helped me is I genuinely understand the game, and there's common ground in that on that level mm -hmm. with me and the players. I remember Andre Iguodala used to grab me, you know, during practice, or I'd grab him, and after practice, I'd say, like, what is this different option? Like, I remember Steve Kerr was just putting in, like, high triangle options uh, when he was trying to implement his offense, mm -hmm. and I was asking, like, what are all the different cuts off of it? You know, Andre would come on the court and show me how it worked, or another person I must shout out, um, Jaron Collins, mm -hmm. Stanford guy as well, mm -hmm. uh, always looked out. So he was my interview coming out of halftime at half that coach, so I'd do the two little questions with him, you know, coach, what are you coming out? Like, what do you need to do on defense or blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. And I'd literally be like, okay, what, he would draw out plays for me on the board, like show me what exactly was happening. That's very rare. To, the guys would do that. Jaron's a great man. He's smart and mm -hmm. he doesn't care. Woman, man, he wants to help you. He wants to help and he's mm -hmm. dope. And like, even now, I was doing something in the playoffs this year and I wanted to understand, understand there was a whole lot of use of the word top locking on defense. Um, basically, it was Joe Harris, the Nets. They mm -hmm. were trying. To, he was trying his best to defend on the Sixers. Um, JJ Redick, mm -hmm. and JJ was running him all over the court. The guy could barely breathe because he was working so hard on defense on mm -hmm. the offensive end. Right. He couldn't hit a shot. <laughs> he was mm -hmm. tired. So, but the whole word like we're top blocking JJ Redick, we're top blocking. So I called Jaron up or I hit him up and I was like, just talk me through because that's a word I hadn't heard in, in from Tara Vanderveer, my Hall of Famer college mm -hmm. coach you know she taught me the game um and so i just keep walking through it and then i completely understood the concept so i mean that's a lifeline <laughs> well you know what it's always great to have people that you can can talk to and get you know real basketball analysis from and real basketball enthusiasts who actually play the game understand mm -hmm. the game who've coached the game and when you have have those type of resources and you can't help but get better <laughs>
How do you handle like nervousness? This is what I feel about nervousness. And I, I always say this, being nervous is a great thing because being nervous prepares you for success. In my opinion, because I don't care who I've, I've ever played against. It didn't matter what team. I was nervous like you wouldn't believe mm -hmm. until I hit the floor because that helped me get focused on what I had to do, who I was going to guard, and how I was going to play against my opponent. Because if I wasn't nervous, I, I had a bad game. <laughs> I mean, I, I, really, I really did. So nervous, being nervous for me was a great thing. Okay. And any guy tell you who's never been nervous, he's not telling you the truth. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you always have moments where you can be very nervous. Yeah, definitely. I think for me, the, what helps, like, I tried, again, I, I think routines help me, much like being when I was playing, like kind of making sure that, okay, my role as a sideline reporter, I have to have instant impact in like 20 second, 30 second mm -hmm. moments. I don't have the luxury of when, like when I'm sitting in the whole seat or the analyst seat of stumbling and then re-saying it or talking my way through a mistake. Like every time I'm on, on air feels like the Super Bowl mm -hmm. and my, my job is live. Um, and I'm even put in some positions too where usually the person that wants to speak to me is happy to speak to me. Usually mm -hmm. I'm speaking to like the best player of the game, they just won, we're all happy. But sometimes like that coach's interview, you know, who wants to talk to Pop in the third quarter when they just went down 10? Right. Nobody. Right. <laughs> you know, and sometimes you can even get kind of crapped on in that moment um, and you just got to take it. Right. You know, like, so what helps me it's really serious it's a really in the sideline role it's really important to be locked in and i remember early on there was a lot of things especially you walking around in the crowd everybody saying hi or mm -hmm. you could just get distracted and then you're in this moment where you got to deliver in 30 seconds and if you're not locked in so sometimes i even got down to the details like like literally like when i'm just a few seconds out i'm not really trying to speak to nobody that's the moment where i need to get locked in then you know, what is my objective, objective right. in this moment? I even think about at first when I was first sideline reporting, sometimes my body would give me away. So like, sometimes my, like the Warriors, some of them used to make fun of me because they was like, your eyes are wild. Because when I would do interviews, I'd be like this. And like. Which, which, <laughs> which I wanted to ask you about too. When it comes to that, you know, when you have that wild moment, you really tr focus in, you're trying to get the best yeah. interview you can. When was the point when you met someone or you was doing an interview, and it turned out to be a horrible interview. Ooh, I mean, so because <laughs> okay. we all had them. Okay, so to fi so to finish that, I would just say like, I won't say recently I've had any horrible interviews, but it's probably not as bad. I would say I'm I've developed the skill where I can make something not look to viewers as bad as it probably feels here or mm -hmm. in here. Like I've actually even worked on like relaxing my face, mm -hmm. you know, keeping a smile on, watching my breathing. Like I might feel a thousand crazy things happening and you know, you hopefully the viewer isn't seeing it. And I wasn't good at that at first. And then, so I'll probably think the craziest things that you could do, I won't, I won't say that I haven't had any like bad interviews really, but I've had some wild moments. Um, I hate to keep bringing up warriors, but like probably the craziest time was parade when they won the championship, the first one, that I was there for, it's not their first as a franchise. And nothing went to plan. We were supposed to have like guests mm -hmm. coming throughout the parade and doing interviews with them. You know what parades are like, mm -hmm. like everybody's happy, everybody's, you know, had a drink, everybody's family, randoms mm -hmm. are coming through. Nothing came in order. Mm -hmm. Like it was supposed to be like, we're getting Clay at two and then 215, Stephen Curry and his family will come. Nothing came in order. It wasn't even just basketball players. It was like random, like, you know, mm -hmm. people from politics, random owners, different people from ownership, like different musicians, entertainers. And it was, some of them came in like one every, one, one every 20 minutes. And then it would be like seven at once. Like literally you would do, come from an interview here, turn around and they'd be like, all right, we're staying live. Stay with that person. And I turn here. I wouldn't even know who the person is that I'm turning to. Mm -hmm. And that feels crazy. Well, that's a wild moment. You know, you know, <laughs> you're talking, crazy. you're talking about the ultimate goal, ultimate, <laughs> you know, achievement. You know, it's going to be pandemonium. It, there's it there's no question about but it. But my job is to reflect poise. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to have their fun. Mm -hmm. the, the person I'm interviewing gets to be crazy, but I have to reflect some kind of poise and grace and make some 
some kind of organized conversation out of the chaos. And even though I don't always feel that on the inside, um, through preparation, literally to prepare for that parade, I wrote on an index card mm -hmm. the night before, uh, two days before and the night before, every single person I could think of that would be there. I had almost everyone except for like, oh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Beast Mode came on and like, I wasn't expecting that, and I was a little bit nervous with that one. But uh, Marshawn Lynch, mm -hmm. and he was, and that was the same year that he was like literally telling reporters, "You know what I'm here for." He wasn't even speaking to reporters, so he came on with Draymond's mom, and I wasn't expecting that moment. But I had written out every single person that could be there, a few bullet points, and there were moments where I had enough time that I knew they were coming. I could quickly look and refresh my mind before I went on air, because I didn't want the same questions to be, "Man, isn't this great? How's the parade?" Because that is boring right. and generic, and that doesn't mm -hmm. separate me as a reporter. I wanted real questions mm -hmm. that got different types of stories out of them. And then we was like, wow, this is a great moment. And I, I, I was proud that I was able to get that out of the different ones, and the preparation helped. Were you able to get some of the same type of uh, emotion feedback from the players? Because I know you had a lot of interviews with those guys after the winning the championship. Mm -hmm. And who's some of the best interviews that you had, you know, during that run? Uh, I mean, from that parade, definitely Draymond Green's interview where he was like, nope, yup, no, or maybe I was like, nope, yup, and he was basically, I mean, at times he was clowning the Cavs and I, you know, didn't want no parts of that. I'm here for the positivity, <laughs> you know, but it, it, yeah. in Warriors lore, it has become kind of a, you know, a, a famous interview for the Warriors fans and mm -hmm. community, but in that moment, what I learned actually, despite all that preparation, and I'm sure you've learned too, is less is more. A lot of these guys right. already knew what they wanted to say. I, you know, I try to get them the right questions and follow-ups, but just let them be the star, because mm -hmm. it's not about me. Oh, it, it, you know, <laughs> and, and I think that's the best way to handle things to, as an analyst. Less is more, and, and really keeping it simple and making it understandable where guys can relate or the fans can relate. Mm -hmm. You know, I think when you, you get a little long-winded and you start it, you know, throwing different phrases and all this stuff out there, you kind of lose the fans after a while. So, <laughs> and I, like I said, you've done a wonderful job of doing just that. Okay, Rod, Rod, don't come on my court trying to show me up. <laughs> don't, be come, don't be come on trying to show me up now. <laughs> what position you play at Stanford? You was at Stanford? Yeah. What position you play? Okay. One of the questions we always ask, if you had to go back as a young woman, mm -hmm. what would you tell your younger self? What would you do differently? Hmm. Oh, that's a hard question. You should have given that to me ahead of time. <laughs> oh, that's, that's <laughs> the, that, you know, that's the, the greatness and, and the lovely part of this show when you can ask questions unexpectedly. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, man, I would say, you know, be yourself, mm -hmm. trust your instincts, mm -hmm. trust your judgment. Um, and I mean, the, the, I would, the advice I would give, I don't know if it's something that I would do differently, but that I know is actually working in my life <laughs> is, um, you know, keep your circle close and tight the best rich riches that you can have in your life are the people around you. And I've, I've always found it important, even when I'm busy, to find time, create time for my balance. I lived according to my values right. all the way. Right. I really have. I believe it's possible to get where you wanna go with good ethics and being a good person. I believe in balance yeah. and time for, your, time for your, your, good, your family and friends. And I always lean on the work. One of the things I want to ask you is moving forward, mm -hmm. what's left for Rosalyn? Oh, I mean, where you see yourself like in the future? I'm just beginning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I feel very hungry, up and coming, you know, have experienced some successes, mm -hmm. but there's so much more to prove, so much more improvement mm -hmm. to make. I mean, I finally made it to some like national stage, but there's mm -hmm. levels within that. I want to have, you know, bigger games, higher profile, uh, visibility, a show, you know, talk, talk on the biggest stages, the biggest moments. I love basketball. I want to stay mm -hmm. around it. I want to, a big thing for me too is uh, creating some kind of program or foundation to work with the next generation. Currently, I do a lot of like one-off, like 
answering Instagram DMs or calling people or having them come shadow me. I want something that can be more like, let's stay connected over time. So I think right. the next step is figuring yeah. out how I can create um, a real program or it, you know, even jump, joining one that already right. exists. Man, I tell you, you're a real blessing, man. And we need more women like you <laughs> in the business that have that type of focus and, and dreams and you know, charisma that you bring to not just to the game, but to young women to, who inspire to do what you're doing. I mean, there's not many people out here that brings that type of passion. Mm -hmm. So we need more women like you. And, uh, you know, any way we can help, I'll tell oh. you, man, I'd be more than happy. But, you know, you, you just bring a joy to the game. Thank you you know, and that's from the first day I met you. <laughs> I mean, you were funny. <laughs> but, you know, you're a great analyst. But Thank uh, you. I feel definitely. the same way for you. Like, it's intimidating to approach somebody of your stature and, and legacy. And when I first went up to you and asked for the picture, you were so nice. And so even mm -hmm. seeing you at Hawks games or um, see, it's always been some kind of encouragement mm -hmm. or warmness and I appreciate that. And I'd like to use this moment to shout out other black women who have done that for me. Mm -hmm. The carry champions, we don't, Jamel we don't get We don't get here by ourselves. No. You know, and, so. and it's not all just black women. I mean, Doris Burke has been mm -hmm. someone that opened mm -hmm. the door for me. But I've had many women who have already succeeded say, I'll take a phone call. Stephanie mm -hmm. Reddy did that for me. She didn't even know me. Stephanie Reddy, Carrie Champion, mm -hmm. Jamel Hill, Doris Burke, mm -hmm. LaChina Robinson is one of the kindest people mm -hmm. you'll ever meet. These people, I got the first take thing with ESPN. <laughs> Carrie Champion immediately texted me. She was like, call me. Let me, know if anything's, let me know if anything's going on. If you have any questions, I got you. Mm -hmm. I'll help you navigate. <laughs> you know, and that's and, and that's that's due to your your background, what you've done so far in the business. I mean, yeah. that's credibility. Yeah. You know, so people recognize that, and the fact that they will call and you recognize that, you know, we want to do anything we can mm -hmm. to help you even be a bigger analyst and be a bigger name, bigger brand. Because I, I think you you should be. I mean, what you bring to the table, a lot of people don't bring that to the table. Mm -hmm. You bring a a wonderful you know, energy to the game, but more importantly, you articulate the game as good as anybody out there, in my opinion. You know, in closing this, yeah. one of the questions that we, we love to ask me, because it's very important to us, uh -huh. is what is your definition of dominance? Ooh, these are good questions. I've never heard that yeah, one. Yeah. Um, for me or for anybody? You know, overall, just okay. in your life, okay. how you've you know really mapped out your life. I mean, oh. well, I'll define dominance because that's a lot easier than what dominance means in my life. <laughs> dominance. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the dominance of my life. Oh, I don't know, but dominance to me is continued excellence over the rest of the field and your colleagues and competitors over the course of time. So you've been excellent, you've done it consistently over time, over the rest of the competitors, that's dominance. Um, for me, I'm, not I'm seeking dominance, yes, but I'm seeking excellence, whatever my best is, and here's what I definitely think about a lot, you'd be surprised. Mm. I'm gonna I'm I'm have endurance in this business. I'm gonna wear you down. Like I remember, sometimes we'd have practice on the, in uh, for our team. And you tell me like, you don't have dominance in your life. That's dominance right there. <laughs> You're more dominant than you may think, as far as your personality and your drive. Thank you. I mean, that's it, it shows very clearly, and Thank that you. Uh, you have that trait. There's no Thank question. You. It, or you wouldn't be as far as you've gotten today if you didn't have it. Thank so you. I want people you to look up and you be do. like, Roz is still doing this. Yeah. 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 Dang. That's where I want to be. Well, it seems like you, it, to me, it seems like you've been doing it a long time. I know it's been a, a short time yeah. and your career is really just starting to grow and I wish you the best in the world. Thank but you. you've done a wonderful job up to this point and I just want to say thank you and uh, appreciate you. And not only you've been a great answer, you're a great friend. Yes. And, uh, thank I you I for really having me. Thank you for coming. Thank you. That's dominance. <laughs>